Welcome to the Gospel Roads Echo Chamber. <laughs> Someday I might actually, you know, end up having a studio or a, a better place to record these again. But, you know, I take what I can get. It's all right. It's uh, kind of grab the uh, space when I can, when it's not reserved. But uh, anyway, uh, hopefully you are well where you are. We're still uh, going through our deep freeze and snow here in central Iowa. It's interesting. I think I heard from somebody, so far this season we've had 19 inches of snow, and now here over the next uh, 24 hours we should get another 4 to 7 inches. That's what I want to do, shovel some more. I did do a, join a gym again this past week and got a couple runs in. I'm feeling it in my body today. I think I'll do the elliptical next week. <laughs> it's already going to be a busy week anyway with... Me at the real job, and we've got our big uh, fundraiser next week, so uh, that's going to be eating up a lot of hours. Anyway, Proverbs 12, that is uh, what we're going to look at today. It goes this way. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of evil deceives, he condemns. No one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are just. The counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright delivers them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the house of the righteous will stand. A man is condemned according to his good sense, but one of the twisted mind is despised. Better to be lower and have a servant than to play the great man and lack bread. Whoever is righteous has regard for the life of his beast, but the mercy of the wicked is cruel. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits lacks sense. Whoever is wicked can uh, covets the spoil of evildoers, but the root of the righteous bear fruit. An evil man is ensnared by the transgressions of his lips, but the righteous escapes from trouble. From the fruit of his mouth, sorry about that, a man is satisfied with good, and the work of a man's hand comes back to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise listens to advice. The vexation of a fool is known at once, but the prudent ignores an insult. Whoever speaks truth gives honest evidence, but a false witness utters deceit. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but those who plan peace have joy. No ill befalls the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are an abomination of the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. The hand of the diligent will rule while the slothful will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. One word, one who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Whoever is slothful will not roast his game, but the diligent man will be precious wealth. In the path of righteousness is life, And in its path, there is no death. Again, Proverbs 12. And like I said, really, by reading each of these, when you go through the Proverbs, you can take one of them and really, you know, expound on each of them. And you can really have a conversation just with each one of those and how you can apply that to your life, both for yourself personally, professionally, and spiritually. And as you go through and... You know, talking about helping others. In fact, one that kind of grabbed me as I was going through these is, you know, being there and kind of, you know, 
hurting others. You know, the vexation of a fool is known at once, but the prudent ignores an insult. I had a friend who was sending me messages the other night because they were out with some friends, and one of the people in the group were basically just insulting them and tearing them down. And I sent a message back. I said, ignore them. Ignore what they're telling you. They made them feel bad because what it was, you know, your job is worthless. Your job is this. You know, see, I get ahead of that. I just tell them how my job is worthless anyway. And I just, it is what it is, but I do my job. (laughs) It's not easy. It isn't. And there's some people that when, you know, they just aren't sure they're so insecure They are so unsure of themselves in so many ways of their job, their life, just because there was a a meme that I saw on Facebook the other day talking about how the life I planned did not go as planned. And a lot of people, because that plan did not happen the way they expected, they start projecting on others. In fact, I know a few people that they're not going through the best part of their life. And I'm sure I do the exact same thing. I'm not going to ever say that I do not fail because I guarantee you I fail every day. I'm probably the biggest fail you know or hear or listen to or see, you know, fill in your blank. I'm just saying it. That's just the way it is. That's the reality. But I'm going to fess up to that because I'm not perfect. I have issues when it comes to dealing with things. And many people do. You are not always the best at dealing with that. I try not to, you know, really throw that out. I know I used to be a lot worse at it than what I am now, but you have to be careful with that. You have to be aware. And when others around you are acting that way and they're trying to bring you down, you have to do your best to just shut them out. I, again, have problems with that because I have such a low, I could say motivation, even though many people say, man, you just do so much. But uh, the way, when it comes to my self-esteem, I really have zero. I have none. I'm so self-conscious in many ways. I'm self-conscious of my body. I'm self-conscious of my knowledge. I'm self-conscious of what I say As I have told so many people, just recording this and posting it, you have no idea what goes through my mind, but I do it. Me being on the radio, every time I crack that mic, scared crazy, but I do it because it's my job. I enjoy it. I say something stupid and I have fun. I make myself laugh and at the time make others laugh too. And that's what I really enjoy of how I hear others laughing and say, man, I just love that because it makes me feel good. And again, that goes back to me being able to help others feel better about themselves, to encourage them to be better than who they are, to really put that smile on your face. So this past week I was at Caribou and I came in one day and somebody did the whole pay it forward, you know, sharing that random act of kindness. They left some money at the register and they said, until this runs out, pay for the next few people's coffee. So I had my coffee paid for, and that was great. So now I've got to do the same thing. How are we doing that every day? What are we doing to help that on a daily basis? And not even with strangers. How are we doing that at work with our coworkers? How are you doing that for your team? If you are a supervisor or a manager or you're a company owner, how are you doing that for your employees? How are you taking care of others to encourage them to be better, to be the best that they can be? How are you doing that? How am I doing that? Again, building others up, helping people be better than what they are. That is a purpose we all have. No matter where we are, no matter what level we are, that is is what we need to do. It's not holding them back because we need to do better than them. It's helping them be better than what they are. If you haven't figured out the passion that I have when it comes to this conversation, because I talk about it so much, it really has that circle. You know, it's all about loving one another, loving each other unconditionally and helping them be the best that they can be. 
Again, reading this and and looking at Proverbs 12, I always say, read this yourself and see where you are in your life and what it speaks to you. But again, the amount of times, again, I know this is very spiritual and I know I base things on scripture and the Bible and there's many that listen to this that do not do that, but it's not just the spiritual piece of this. It's the things that you look at and read here that you can just take the morals and apply them to your life. The ideas of how to deal with others and to help others to be better of how you can apply that. That's all I'm, that's the conversation I'm having. That's what I'm showing. And that's how I'm trying to help. You know, you are where you are and that's the way it's going to be. And I'm okay with that. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are, because that is your choice. That is what you have decided. My choice, my responsibility is to help you be better. Now, if you're a bad person and need to get slapped, that's on you. And I'm not going to help you to be a worse person because then if you go to jail, it's my, you know, then it's on me. And, you know, there's a whole rabbit hole there. (laughs) You know, it's just being better people, treating each other with kindness, loving each other, helping others be the best that they can be. How are we doing that? How are we helping them being better people? Fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, friends, co-workers. How are we just helping them on that daily? In fact, it's been an interesting winter for me because out of the blue, my neighbor started helping me on shoveling my walk. I never asked. It just happened. And I'll do that a little bit, helping them shovel, shovel the approach in their driveway. It just kind of goes back and forth. But again, I just woke up. I, can't, I Actually, I came home one day. It wasn't even I woke up, but I, I came home one day and my sidewalk was shoveled. And I, I, I had to look. I t- had to scratch my head. I, I didn't understand. And then all of a sudden there was another time I woke up and boom, it was there again. So I didn't have as much to shovel as I normally would. And I'm so appreciative. We don't really say anything about it. It's just kind of like a quiet thing. I mean, we'll end up outside together, shoveling together. And we just, we just, it's, it's quiet. We don't say anything about it. We just leave it be because it doesn't have to be. We're not doing things to be seen. At least you should not be doing things to be seen. You should be doing things because you want to help. You should be doing things because you care. You should be doing things because you want to. I should be doing things because I want to. It's not what I'm going to get out of it. I should not expect anything. I'm entitled to nothing. Proverbs 12. Read that for you. See where you are to help you as you're trying to take that next step, as you're trying to move up in life, as you're trying to be better personally, professionally, and spiritually. Your walk with God, your walk with your company, your walk with your family. Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. Have a great day. God bless.